Regarding quality 14, yep. what does a soul-based understanding that personal truth must be faced before divine truth can be found look like in my personal life? <laughs> well, firstly, I'd be always seeking to know what's really going on inside of myself. Not what I hope's going on inside of myself or hope everybody else sees or what the facade is, but actually know what is really going on inside of myself by feeling it. Mm -hmm. I would not avoid that process of feeling what's going on inside of myself. I would want to know more about myself. Whether somebody who's in a better condition of love than I can tell me, that'd be fantastic. I, wouldn't, I would actually look forward to them telling me rather than trying to avoid what they say. Yeah. Um, I would allow the law of attraction to expose to me through the law what my real condition is. So instead of, instead of ignoring what happened today, I'd be looking at what happened today? <laughs> you know, what, what, what does this show me about my soul that's out of harmony with God's truth, that's out of harmony with God's love? what inside of my soul is causing these particular problems. So, and, and it could be two sets of issues. It could be issues relating to being attacked all the time, which is an issue of self-love, or it could be the issue where we're willing to attack others or harm others, and that's an issue of loving others. Mm. And either one we would need to address. We would look at honestly what went on inside of our soul, and we would look at what we've attracted during the course of the day with regard to everything from the way insects integrated with us right the way through to the way other humans, you know, worked with us. And we would examine everything. We would examine what's going on in my relationship with God. Have I received divine love today? Because if I haven't, then it means that I'm blocked. I, I need to face some personal truth. Yeah. There's some more truths that I need to discover about myself. Pray about wanting to know what are the truth or is the truth on a certain subject or are the truths regarding our entire person. Pray about knowing those particular things. Develop a personal longing inside of yourself to know. That's what you would do if you lived in harmony with this quality. You would realise, without going through this process of finding out what I really am like, God's truth can't enter me. God's truth is what I really am like. Mm -hmm. When God's truth enters me, it'll tell me what I'm really like. If I'm resisting knowing what I'm really like, how can God's truth enter me? It can't. So I would, I would see this as a primary priority in my life. I wouldn't put it on the back burner and just try to have fun every day and do a two-minute analysis. You know, at the end of the day, my whole life will be focused on trying to bring my life into harmony by feeling what's going on inside of me as it really is, not as I hope it to be. Yeah. All right, do you want to talk mm. about some of the things from your notes? Um, you've covered a lot of this in your intro. I have a strong desire to see myself as God sees me rather than deny or ignore my emotional truth. Yes, yeah, so we've got to remember that God's truth is how God sees the universe. Now, because you're a member of the universe, <laughs> you're in the universe, God's truth is also going to be about how God sees you. Now, if you're unwilling to feel about how God sees you, then you're not going to be in harmony with God. And if you're not in harmony with God, you're not in harmony with God's laws and you're not in harmony with God's love. So you can't expect to receive God's love or God's truths in that space. Yeah. So at some point, you're going to have to come to terms with the fact how God sees you is the most important thing. Yeah. So I need to know how does God see me? I need to start to under try to understand it intellectually, but more importantly, once I see that how I feel about myself is not the way God sees me, then I'm going to have to change a feeling inside of myself. And that's going to have to be something that I choose to use my will to do. No one else is going to force me to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to choose to use my will to do it. Yeah. And that means that you know, I'm not going to get pushed by somebody into doing it. I, I'm not, I don't have to get helped by somebody to do it. I need to choose to do it for myself. Now, now if I did that, I would be living more in harmony with this quality in that I understand that this personal error is a major blockage to my relationship with God. And if I really badly want my relationship with God, I am going to want to know what my personal errors are. Yeah. 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 
Okay, I do not resist what God is showing me through the law of attraction. Rather, I embrace it. Yes. You talked about this. Len, let's talk about it a little bit more. Embracing the law of attraction is a lot different than what most people do. What most people do is resist almost in <laughs> totally what the law of attraction has brought them in, in, a, in a particular day. Remember, the law of attraction operates upon your soul. So it's really telling you what your soul's real condition is. But what most of us finish up doing is we create a life where we circle ourselves with comfort. We, 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 we don't engage anything out of the normal, and that's what we're used to. And the reason why we do that is it helps us avoid what we've attracted, what we would normally attract if we didn't engage this comfort. And that's why when we go traveling, for example, we get more triggered, mm -hmm. more uh, emotionally unstable generally. The reason why is because there is more opportunity for us to notice the differences as to what the law of attraction is bringing us based on what our soul condition is. So we need to be engaging new things in the course of a day, in doing, doing new things, engaging new people, doing all sorts of other things in the course of a day. If we truly loved the law of attraction in this case, what we would do is we want to engage it. We wouldn't be spending our life trying to avoid it. We wouldn't be spending our life afraid of it. Mm -hmm. We'd be wanting to engage it because it's God's messenger of truth to us. It tells us what God feels about us. Remembering that all of God's laws are perfect and therefore all of the operation of the law of attraction is perfect. It's telling us the truth about ourselves. So if we're getting attacked, for example, it's telling us that we don't love ourselves very much. If we're attacking other people and other people are getting angry about our attack of them, then it's telling us that we're not very loving to other people very much. Mm -hmm. And we need to see these issues of love as they truly are, errors within our soul, and allow ourselves to release them. And in fact, if we really understood this quality, we would want to yeah. see them and we'd want to release them. We wouldn't want to avoid them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I do not try to falsify a position of divine truth when I know my personal truth is very different. Yes, so in other words, I don't try to fake it until I make it, which is a saying that we, we, in the world that's yes. very prominent and very prominent in New Age movements, fake it until you make it. It's also very prominent in most religions, fake it until you make it type of thing, fake it until you believe mm -hmm. it or until it becomes a part of yourself. It's not the way to proceed. God is never fake with us. God knows your real condition. The best course of action with God is to not fake anything and to be who you really are and see who you really are, warts and all. And that, if that means seeing a whole heap of bad things about yourself initially and having to come to terms with that, then allow yourself to do that. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to falsify yourself with God. It's not going to work. God already sees everything and, and God's waiting for you to see what God sees. That's part of you receiving God's truth, mm -hmm. you seeing what God sees. So allow yourself to go through this acknowledgement of what's really inside. Allow yourself to see what God is seeing inside of you. Now, God sees a lot of good things that you can't see, and God sees also a lot of things that are not very nice that you think are fine. That's the reality. So God sees positive things about you that you think are negative, and God sees negative things about you that you think are positive. And you're going to have to change on both positions if you're yeah. going to become in hand and harmony with God's truth. Yeah. 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 Okay. I do not try to hide from myself or others my true desires, even when they are unloving. Yes. So in other words, I allow myself to go, wow, I really don't like that person. And I don't hide that from myself. I don't try to make out that I do like them. I go, yeah, I don't like them. Let me feel why I don't like them. What's going on inside of me that causes me to not like them? Yeah. What's the emotion that's driving me? What's my personal error that's inside of me that causes me to hate my brother or dislike my brother or not enjoy their company or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. What's going on inside of me? When I'm truly uh, in harmony with this quality, this quality of facing personal truth, I'm going, wow, that's true. I feel like that about that person. Wow, that's not very loving, but, but, but it's not a judgment of myself. I've got to go, okay, 
I'm not very loving there. What do I want to do about it? Do I want to feel the reason why I'm not very loving? Or do I want to ignore this and just make out that I'm fine? Yeah. Now, as soon as you choose to ignore, you've got to understand the ramifications. You choose to ignore, you can't receive divine love anymore and you won't receive divine truth anymore until you choose to acknowledge. Mm. That's the way God's laws work with regard to the human soul and truth and love. Mm -hmm. So when I'm choosing to ignore what I really am inside, I am automatically blocking the flow of love and truth from God into my soul. Mm. And I've got to see that rather than try to make out that everything's fine. And, and the best way to see that is look at your life today and then look at your life two or three or four years ago and ask yourself, have I really changed? Do I feel differently? Do I feel more loving? Am I treating people more loving? Do I feel more positive? Am I treating people more positively? Do I feel more desire for truth? Am I longing for truth more? Do I feel more desire for God's love? Am I longing for God's love more? And have an honest assessment of yourself today and yourself four years ago. How much time do you spend, you know, doing those particular things? And most people will find that four years ago and today there's very little difference mm. aside from their location, <laughs> perhaps, mm. or the person they're with or whatever. But aside from that, there are usually many of the same feelings inside of the soul as there was four years ago. Now, if that's the case, it means that during that four-year period of time, you have not faced much personal truth. You have been unwilling to face personal truth. The primary reason why you haven't grown, the only reason, in fact, why you haven't grown is because you haven't wanted to know about yourself. So stop that. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop not wanting to know yeah. and start wanting to know. Yeah. You know, start absorbing the truth about yourself. Yeah. God's got, got plenty of things in the universe telling you the truth about yourself. Minute by minute. Minute by minute. Yeah. yeah. Presumably in that what you're saying about not hiding yourself or your real feelings, presumably there's, there's sort of three conditions we can be in. One is the facade and really wanting to hide that from everyone and ourselves. Mm -hmm. The, the second is sort of what you referred to, which is acknowledging it and uh, like taking responsibility which is for it. Feeling your injured self, yeah, but wanting to still be your injured self. A lot of people stay in that place. Okay, that's the one I was getting to. Yeah, see, I feel like I feel like there's the facade, which is not even wanting to know what you really feel, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, making out that you're someone different than you really are. Yeah. So that's always going to be a problem. But then there's a second thing where you're actually feeling your injuries but not wanting to, to actually do anything about them, not wanting to change, not wanting to grow in love. not want, In fact, you want to rebel, you know, in that place a lot of times. Mm. To me, that's feeling the injured self without any desire to become more loving. Yeah, and I suppose I see people being quite abusive in that state. Because Very abusive, Because they yep. abuse the principle of truthfulness and say, mm. well, no, I've given up my facade. This is how I am right now. Yeah, I'm just and a bitch and I don't care. <laughs> You've yeah. got to put up with it. And that's very unloving. In fact, what you're doing is more damage to your soul in that place. And, and um, telling people truth. Yeah, going around saying, you're this and you're that, you're this, you're that, and not even examining truthfully your own personal motive for doing so, which most yeah. of the time is to pull them down so that you feel better about yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the reality is you're not being very honest about yourself in that place, really. You're still in a facade in some ways. Yes. You're not really feeling your own causal emotion. So most people start being honest about their causal emotion but still choose to not feel it. Mm -hmm. To truly be honest about your own emotion inside of you, you have to feel it. Yeah. So a lot of people have a facade and then they get out of their facade and start to see what they feel, like they start to feel what they feel, but they have no desire to truly feel it. Mm -hmm. They have a desire to rebel against it and, you know, get angry with the world and all that stuff. That's, that's improvement over a facade, but it's not more loving, yeah. right? The reality is you're, you're now in a destructive phase and if you continue on your path of destruction, your soul is going to get even darker. Yeah. if you stay in that destructive phase. So that's not very helpful for the development of your soul or progress in love. You need to get out of that and go into this willingness, a desire to feel your true self. That's a desire to feel your injured self, mm. your true injuries, 
without blaming anyone else, without projecting it on other people, without damaging other people with it. That place, very few people have reached at this point. Yeah, and perhaps it's, a, it's for another discussion, but I feel there's a lot of um, blockages and uh, things people come up against in moving to that ultimate third state, which is really facing personal truth, which is humility. I don't feel that's the ultimate state. The ultimate state is the fourth state, which is coming to see yourself as God sees you completely without any injuries. Of course. That's, yeah. the, that's the real state that we were created in, the, the state that we can grow towards and the state that we can become at one with God in. Yeah. So that's where we're headed. But you can't go to that state without you know, by jumping some of the others, yeah. generally. Yeah. Yeah. So of perhaps... course, I do feel you can jump the state where you feel the injuries and then go stuff the world. I'm just going to stay in these injuries. You can certainly jump that state. That's just an exercise of your will. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you sometime about that because I often see people in that second state without seemingly any sense of morality or ethics. I agree, um, yeah. which or... is a huge problem yeah. if they ever want to become more loving. Yeah. Mm. Or on the other hand, um, where I suffer is where I see that and then I judge myself. Yeah, which which is also not ethical. No, <laughs> because I'm treating myself badly. Well, not just state. because of that. The majority of people have errors within them because of somebody else doing something toward, to them. There's only two reasons why we have errors within them generally. One is that we've made choices that are out of harmony with love or two, that other people have made choices towards us that are out of harmony with love. Now, for the, for the majority of us, we have a mixture of those things. So if you judge yourself, you're not always honouring the second thing, which is that other people may have damaged many of the things that, that are now damaged within you. Mm. And you're not being truthful about that. So that's not ethical either. You've got, to be ethical, you've got to be balanced right across the board. <laughs> that means that I am responsible for only the things I chose to do out of harmony with love. Other people are responsible for what they chose to do out of harmony love towards me. I am responsible for feeling all of my emotions. I need to choose to feel both sets of emotions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are the things we need to understand if we're truly going to be facing our personal truth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, I have a willingness to be humble at all times, seeing that my personal truth is often not loving. Yes. So humility, remember, is this, firstly, the ability to f feel all of your own emotions, whether they're loving or unloving. Secondly, humility allows you to examine yourself honestly as God sees you. So it's a desire to examine yourself as God sees you. Now, if we examine ourselves how God sees us and we find ourselves, oh, there, there we see something, humility would also then, by extension, go, I want to feel why I feel this. I would want to go through the experience of feeling this error so that it can leave me. Humility would dictate that. So while many people have heard the definition of humility, very few are practicing it. Just to practice humility, you have to feel. Yeah. You have to have an emotional experience. And, and this is where most people fail when it comes to the, the, the path towards God. That's why Religions got created, in fact, because many people did not want to feel. And then as a result, they want to believe rather than feel. Mm -hmm. They want to believe in something rather than feel what they have to go through to become more loving themselves. And they don't understand that the true religion from God's perspective is love. That's the true religion. Now, that's not a doctrine. That's a, or if you, if you want to think of it a different way, it might be called a doctrine of love, <laughs> but it's not a human doctrine. It's God's definition of love. That's what true religion is. And if we choose to not feel, we are automatically choosing to be out of harmony with that definition. Mm. Mm. Okay, final one. Mm -hmm. I feel that I must release my personal truth, error, mm -hmm. to get closer to God. Yes. So I must release my personal truth, or let's say the truth doesn't have to be released really, does it? So I have to release the personal error in order to get closer to God. Mm -hmm. I know and understand that if I live this quality, I know and understand that with all my soul. I understand, wow, I can't get closer to God by acting differently, by 
taking some different actions, by saying different words, by ignoring truth about myself. I can't get closer to God. The only way I can get closer to God is by feeling my own personal emotions and feelings, which are my personal truths, if you like, even though they might be truth and error. I'm prepared to feel them. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I'll get closer to God. And that's what I need to remember from this quality. If, if I allow myself to go through that process, I will always come out of it with, in a new state. I will always be closer to God. I'll always be closer to truth. I'll always be able to love more easily. If I'm still finding love very difficult and hard to achieve, I'm still not understanding God's truths, I'm still certainly not acting in harmony with God's laws, then it means that I'm finding love real hard. Yeah. And the only reason why I find love hard is because there's something inside of me that causes it. And so I need to choose to feel that particular thing. And if I understood this principle, I would choose to feel it. I would choose to face it because I want to get closer to God.